Hello again, I'm John Terzak, and welcome to another one of my video recipes here at the Season Cook. Today, I'm going to answer the question for you, kind of an elegant question, is how to make a beef en croute, or beef en croute, slash beef wellington. There's so many versions of beef wellington out there these days. I'm going to try to get as close as I can, and don't fudge it a little bit for my own sake. Close as I can means filet of beef tenderloin, mushroom duck cell, which you have a video for, and baked in pastry and served with Madeira sauce. So I'm going to put my beef wellington and form it in this mold. So I want to make sure my piece of meat fits in the mold. Now, not everybody makes them in the mold. Some people just make them on the table. I've made a couple of hundred of them on the table. But I'm the only guy I know that uses a mold to make these beef wellingtons these days because I love the way it makes the shape look. So I've already kind of tested this out. And this end is a little too big for me. So I'm going to cut this piece off so that I have a better fit inside that tube. As you see, this is the tail end of the tenderloin of beef. So let's just take... A little touch more off over there. I want to make sure this, there you go. Now it's kind of like almost all the same size. We have no problem figuring out what to do with those scraps, by the way. So I have salt and pepper on here. I'm going to sear this real quick in this hot pan that I have over here. We'll give that a second to cool after we get it seared. We're not cooking it. We want it to be completely extra rare when we put it into the pastry. Now, if you want, if, let's say you have somebody coming over to your house that wants medium well, but I'm recommending that you make the loaf version, which is what I'm making for you today, a rare to medium rare. So if you have somebody that wants a medium, then you make an individual version just for them. And you can learn how to make that by going to my individual seafood pate and fruit recipe and just put all the beef wellington stuff in the pastry. That way you can make a single version of this dish for somebody who might want it medium, medium well, or more. This is just about done. Just going to add a little bit more brown flavor to the outside of this. And I'm done. We're going to let that cool off for a few minutes and then we're going to roll out the pastry but I'm going to flavor the outside of this tenderloin with mustard and roasted garlic puree and I'm going to roll it in some breadcrumbs before I set it into the mold with the pastry and the duck cell. So we'll be back in about five minutes where we're going to roll the pastry out and assemble this, egg wash it, decorate it a little bit and put it into a 400 degree oven. So hopefully this won't be a really long video, but it'll be really good. I'll be right back. All right, that filet is cool a little bit, and it's been about five minutes. That's it. So here I have a piece of commercial frozen puff pastry that I bought at the supermarket, which is what I recommend that you do. And first thing I'm going to do, and I would recommend it to you, is I'm going to test it out to see how it fits in here. So it fits pretty good, just the way it is now, but I don't want it quite that thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it out a little bit that way, and I'm going to roll it out a little bit this way. And then I'm going to lay it inside of my mold. And I'm going to put some of my mushroom duck cell in the bottom of this mold. But I only want to put in as much as the meat is. So I don't need mushroom duck cell running the whole distance. I'm going to put a little bit of blanched spinach that I got in here, just a little tiny bit for, to add some color to this, which is a twist. 
Spinach is not normally in beef wellington, okay? Now I'm going to take the filet and I'm going to put Dijon mustard all over the filet. Another little dimension of flavor. This is not real common to do this for a beef wellington. Then I'm going to do the same thing with some garlic puree, which you have a video for, of course. Just add another little dimension of flavor on the beef. Then I'm going to take this and roll that in some breadcrumbs. That will help absorb any moisture inside this crout and will help keep the pastry crisp and not, not getting soggy, which it normally doesn't get, but if it sits around for half an hour, it might. So now we're going to fit this into the mold. Time to get rid of that. And rinse off the hands. Now we're going to put another quick layer of duck cell on the top of this. You don't want to overdo it with the duck cell. We got plenty of flavors here. We can put a little thread of spinach on this side too. Like so. Now we're going to see where it la where how it laps and how you see how perfectly it made sense for me to roll this out a little bit. Now I have some egg wash here that I made which is two egg yolks with a couple of ounces of heavy cream and a splash of cold water. Okay. So we're going to lay the first one over there. We're going to seal the pastry like so, like that. Now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn this out onto the pan that I'm going to bake it on. And I'm going to egg wash the inside of this and the inside of that so this pastry all sticks together like so. Then I'll just trim that pastry with my little cutter. Now could you decorate this with goo gobs of little decorations like these little star cutters and little uh, tri florets. Yes, I'm not going to do that today. But what I am going to do is I'm going to cut a little hole in the top of this to let some of that moisture out of there when this is, when this is baking. And we're going to get this excess flour off of this. And we're going to score the outside of the pastry with the back dull end of the knife. Just to put a little bit of decoration on it. Because we're going to serve this sliced on a plate, you're not going to see a lot of decorations going on here anyway. But that's up to you. You can, you know, get ballistic on it if you want. That's going to work just fine for my purposes. Now I'm going to egg wash this thoroughly. And I'm going to pop it directly into a 400 degree oven. Probably going to take 25 minutes. That's my guess. I'll let you know exactly how long it took when we come back to pull that out of the oven. Let it relax for a few minutes. 
then slice it and put it on the plate with the Madeira sauce. I hope I'm making this as simple as I can because it's kind of simple even though it's a little bit, little bit complicated. So we'll be back when Wellington is done baking and then we'll slice our beef and croot. Alright, the Wellington is done. Or is it the beef and croot? Just remember, Welling, beef Wellington will always be beef and croot. But beef and croot isn't necessarily beef Wellington because beef Wellington has some specific connotations where beef and croot means beef and pastry with whatever you want. Okay, so let's get it out. And as you can see, it's looking pretty good. Let's transfer it over to the cutting board. See how that bottom, bottom looks good. Look at that bottom. Let's give this five minutes to relax, and then we'll slice it on the plate. Okay, it's been relaxing for about five minutes. Let's cut into this and see what we got. Let's just go right into the middle. Sharp roast knife. Oh boy, here we go. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks good. So I'm going to show you two different ways to serve this on a plate, okay? One way is to serve one nice slice like that and stand it up on the plate. And the other way is to serve a thinner slice maybe, depending on how big of a portion you want to serve, and serve that laying on its side, like that. Both of these versions work perfect for me, believe me. So, the final touch, of course, is this awesome Madeira sauce that I made a video for you for. And I would definitely recommend you using this sauce with this dish. This looks really nice. Now, can I go all the way around the plate? Yes, I can. I could also do this and use a little bit less sauce on the plate. a little chopped parsley on that one just for fun. Just a teeny bit on the sauce. And then this one here. Same drill. Oh, this Madeira sauce. Oh. And as I mentioned to you, in the earlier part of this video, if you have a guest or person you're cooking for that wants this cooked beyond medium rare, as in medium or medium well, there's two ways you can do it. You can make an individual one, and you can cook it as long as you want. And then if the pastry gets brown, but you think you still have to cook it more to make it medium or medium well, you can cover the pastry with some aluminum foil while you're continuing to cook it beyond the medium rare. So there you have it, beef and croute, or filet of beef wellington. They both work for me, and both names work well for me. Enjoy this if you get an opportunity to have this. This is a treat.